Here we're going to look at soil testing. It provides analysis of the soil. So what you do is you take a representative sample from a field, you send it to a lab, and they work on extracting certain nutrients from the soil, and they'll report back to you uh, on a sheet. You can email or they can mail it to you, and it's a great way for you to find out information about what's going on in your field that it's kind of hard to see, um, definitely observe. It can save you a lot of time. So often I get asked the question, is it worth $20? You know, is it worth the cost? And that's $20 just an average. Um, it, the information you can't see, and I, in my opinion, it's one of the best $20 you can spend on a field. The benefits are great and the costs are low. So that's why I highly recommend soil testing. Even if you're looking at an area for pH, you may not have to go through and do the complete soil analysis, but sometimes I'll even test a field multiple times during the year, typically in the spring and also again in the fall. How many sample locations? Well, you can't take too many different samples. Um, in various fields, there might be a good field, a bad field, an average field. You ideally want to sample these separately, at least for the initial test. Here are the examples. We have a wooded area, a vegetable garden, a low-lying area, um, some green grass. But you want to sample an area that's fairly consistent. So you can see in this low-lying area, low area, there's some yellow spots. Well, those sample locations are outside of those yellow spots. I would test those separately just to get an idea of what would be going on there. It could be a pH issue, it could be something else. Uh, the vegetable garden set is sampled separately than the wooded area, than the green grass. Uh, as many different locations, at least to start with. And then if you determine, oh, these two are very similar, these two are the same, in the future you could reduce your number of samples. But initially, just trying to get an idea, um, as many different areas as you think possible. Your goal is to get a representative sample. So this is your population. You want your sample to be within that population. And the soil lab is only as good as the sample that you send them. So proper s sampling technique is your responsibility and take time with it. There's many different ways they can still get you accurate results. There's not just one way. You can use a spade shovel. Uh, you can use a soil auger, a soil tube. Doesn't really matter um, as long as you're consistent and able to get that sample within your population. In this case, this would be your field. So how to sample? Well, proper sampling technique and equipment. It's not really all that complicated. You want to take a random, I always say, six to nine samples per area that's about six to nine inches deep. Pretty easy to remember. Six to nine samples, six to nine inches deep. Um, the goal is you don't want to go much deeper or much shallower than that. This is the root zone. This is where your roots are going to be exposed to. So tools of the trade. Uh, official stainless steel probe you can use. I've used those in the past. They make it really easy for doing a lot of samples, particularly walking in large cornfields. Or I use sometimes inch and a half PVC pipe and a sledgehammer and a pail in a bag. You take the PVC pipe, you want it straight ideally. Take your sledgehammer, I put the plastic bag in the pail. Uh, I pound the PVC pipe into the soil. I knock out the soil, I take another walk. Pound it in the ground again, another six to nine inches, put it back in the bag. Take that bag out when I'm done with that field label the tie, take another bag out of my pocket, put it back in the pail, go through do it for another field. It's pretty quick and easy um, to do. So it doesn't have to be all that complicated. I like inch and a half because the soil comes out of this pretty easy. If you go much smaller, especially if it's a little, if it rained recently or it's a wetter soil, it might get really jammed in there pretty good. Inch and a half I can wrap it a couple times with a sledgehammer and usually it falls right out. So where to test? There's many different labs. Uh, more cost does not necessarily mean better tests. Um, universities provide great quality results. I've tested at multiple labs, um, and they all give pretty consistent results. I know certain people that spend a lot more than I do on soil tests, and I've looked at their results, and they give you some more information, uh, some more ratios, and a little bit different um, information as far as details based on the results. But pretty much I just want to see the numbers of results and we can work on balancing the soil from there. So just because you're spending more in this case does not always mean it's a better test. What do the results tell you? Remember, it's not the total nutrients. I think that's a big misconception. It's an estimation of the plant available nutrients. Soil test results provide the extractable nutrients. You don't care how much potassium is in the soil. You want to know how much is available to the plants. And that's what soil tests try to do. This is why if you send two samples from the same field to the same lab to kind of test them to see, and they come back with different numbers, uh, and you think that they're giving you wrong results, 
Well, they're not. There's a certain amount of variability that occurs. Now, they'll be very close, don't get me wrong about that, but they won't be the exact same number. So you're getting an estimation. They're trying to knock off these nutrients from the soil um, and determine what's available to the plant. Because a soil test for plants, doesn't matter how much you have in the soil, it wants to know the portion of that nutrient that's extractable and ideally available to the plant. A lot of, or last majority you see here, of the potassium and phosphorus is bound up in the soil not available to the plant. So that's not what the soil tests measure. They're measuring extra extractable nutrients. Nitrogen. Uh, why is it so difficult to test? Why do some labs not test for it? Why do some labs used to test for it and don't anymore? Well, to get an accurate result, you need to do nitrate test. Nitrogen is in constant flux. It's constantly changing. Uh, keep in mind, the lab will test and generate an accurate result for the lab, but if this doesn't represent your field, it's not valuable or worthwhile. You want to have an estimation of the nitrogen that's in your field, and the June nitrate test is the best way to do that. It's taken in June. You want to sample down 12 inches, so a little deeper, and you don't want to put it in a plastic bag. You want to put it in a paper bag so it breathes, and you want to get it to the lab as soon as possible. Typically, people will sample and drive it directly to the lab to get the most accurate results that represent their field conditions as possible.